Hello and welcome to this, the Books Crypto Club weekly catch up on Zoom. It is Sunday, the 24th of April, 2022. And today we're going to be talking as normal about whatever comes up on the conversation. Sometimes we talk about cryptocurrencies, crypto assets, blockchain, DeFi, NFTs, ICOs, STOs, lots of the three letter acronyms. We sometimes talk about Web3 talk about uh, layer one and layer two blockchains, lightning network. Sometimes we talk about Bitcoin, Ethereum, Dash, Monero, Cardano, many, many of the other um, cryptocurrencies and blockchain protocols. Really depends upon what the audience decide they want to talk about. These sessions are open to novices and experts alike. We welcome everybody uh, and we love to use these sessions uh, for people to ask questions and to share ideas and knowledge and experience as well. Do remember to click on the subscribe and like, make a comment in, in the comment section on YouTube. Even better, come along to a future session. We hold these every Sunday at 7 p.m. UK British summertime. Everyone is welcome. Gary. Jeff, hello, how are you? Good, mate. So how's your crypto world of late? Ah, busy. Just, uh, I'm head of marketing again. Uh, fired my head of marketing for the third time. So I've gotten that hat back, which I don't really want, but you know, it is what it is. Yep. Um, new platform launching in about 40 days. Um, I go to Australia in 42 days. So a little bit of stress there with, with getting stuff launched. Okay. Um, uh, what else? Got a board meeting coming up. Uh, new token stable coins we're about to launch. So I think we're the first proper UK exchange, like not a, not a Kraken and not a Gemini. To do uh to do stable coins so that's quite exciting okay uh and then a new mobile app to go with the new launch so and staking i forgot about staking testing poc i'm staking right now as well so uh, yeah lots and lots and lots and lots of stuff so i was gonna say here's an opportunity jeff if you want to talk about coin pass and what you're doing Boom. um yeah so uh real quick coin pass been in the business for four or five years now um we're a uk-based crypto exchange uh our Bread and butter used to be mainly on-ramp and off-ramp, so getting back and forth from a UK account. We also do trading execution, all that good stuff now. So we are a full feature crypto exchange. Uh, look at adding staking and stable coins in the next kind of month, month and a half, which is really exciting. Lots of good stuff going on. Um, I'm one of the founders and the CEO. Uh, my background was cybersecurity and infrastructure. I did casinos, data centers, hedge funds, and eventually um, uh, SoftBank, which is one of the largest um, investment funds in the world. And um, through that sort of, you know, career, I was always putting tech into problems and coming up with solutions. And in 2017, it was very hard to buy crypto in pounds at large scale. So mm -hmm. a few founders came to me that wanted to buy between 20, 50K worth of Bitcoin in pounds with no FX risk. And it was like, you kind of can't, you have to use Euro or US dollars. And they were like, why not? That's a good question. Why not? I was feeling very entrepreneurial. I'm like, yeah, let's build it ourselves. Why not? Middle of a bear market. Let's go for it. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, we came up with the concept in seven months, put our own money in it. Uh, I put my own capital, my own ETH, my own Bitcoin into our, into our order book. And that was the original liquidity pot. Um, and yeah, we just, the, the goal was to sell one Bitcoin to one person. Uh, I think second month through open, Bitcoin went down to like 3,000 US dollars in 2018, I think it was. Uh, that turned around very quickly. Uh, kept growing, started doing limited company comps. And within four months, we were cash flow positive which is crazy yeah. for a startup and crazy for crypto. 2019, did limited company accounts for property investors, business accounts, et cetera. Um, FCA was still nowhere to be seen. There was no framework there. 2020, they came with a framework. We were the third company in the UK to apply for that FCA register list. And then uh, COVID happened. I was sitting in Switzerland with my mum and I saw the S&P go down 11%. I'm like, wow, it's good. this is going to be a bloodbath. And that was the busiest month we've ever had. So we had to double the company twice just to just to keep up with demand through throughout COVID. Uh, fast forward to end of last year, we got our FCA license. Uh, we did our first kind of private raise to bring more people on board. Now 44 people in the company. And uh, we're about to launch our amalgamated platform of bringing our two, uh, our, our simple product, Coinpass Instant, and our advanced product, Coinpass Trade, onto a single platform with a new UI. Uh, okay. So yeah, exciting times, lots happening. Uh, I can barely keep up with the market, let alone run the business with a lot of people, but it's uh, always something new to learn. And that's why I like doing these kind of things with, with yourself, Gary, and everyone else. Yep. Well, that's great because the, the good thing with CoinPass as well, so you're actually FCA registered. 
Yeah. And also, you, uh, I guess you, you did that prior to the uh, crypto asset register domain that they entered into. Yeah. So when we, you know, 2017, I was doing crypto and property and a bunch of other stuff. And, you know, the thing about blockchain as a technology, it's global. It's, you know, kind of off, um, off regulation, off whatever. So they can never really regulate crypto. It's always going to be GDPR non-compliant. But the endpoint parties that either build on it or issue some sort of gateway between the old world and the new world, mm -hmm. uh, which is kind of forms part of our vision for blurring the line between banking, financial services and crypto. That's our, our vision is they're going to regulate us the platforms, the gateways, the wallets, et cetera. So yep. one of our, our COO co-founder, he's been in regulatory markets and trading and compliance for 20 odd years, you know, Lehman Brothers, um, uh, MT, uh, MT Global, all those kind of big names. And it's like, well, they're going to regulate us eventually. Why don't we just pretend that we're a mini prime? This is in 2018. Mm -hmm. So we were doing proper KYC, proper compliance, risk checks, asking people suitable questions. Do you know the risk of crypto? No one was asking that. And it made us kind of back footed a little bit but the one thing we've never had to do we've never had to recomply any of our users which is really good and obviously gives them a good service then when the fca register came in it's like well we already have 60 percent of this done we just have to tweak all of it took three weeks off the business we built everything out through january um happy birthday present for me i don't usually don't usually do much for my birthday in january but uh filling out fca paperwork was something to do i suppose mm -hmm. and um uh, yeah, we had our application in uh, second or third of Feb. I think we're the third business in the country to get it in. Now, we didn't do an EMI, like a payment scheme, um, mm -hmm. like a lot of banks have. Um, so I think uh, like Zigloo Mode, a few of those other crypto companies are more payment orientated businesses and they can do crypto yep. automatically. But we weren't doing payments. So we had to do the full register, the, the hardware, as I call it. And it took about 21 months. And we were getting my biggest problem with it. And I'm quite vocal about this is that the questions that we were getting was different from some of our friends and competitors. Did, I, did they ask you about your margins? Did they ask you about your business plan? Did they ask you about your staff growth? I'm like, no, that's got nothing to do with AML, mm -hmm. which I agree with. So uh, it was a long shot. We had the same case officer the whole time, which is great. But um, when that register started to grow, I think we we're the sixth or seventh company on there to get on the register. And now we're at about 30, I believe. Okay. Um, Gemini has two for some reason. Maybe they lost the login. I don't know. But um, yeah, it's a very, very small list for a very big country. And there's a lot of people still trying to get back into the UK, which I think is a really healthy sign. Yeah. And it's interesting as well. We were talking about this a couple of weeks ago, how it is that um, the UK politicians are showing signs of support for crypto, which is great. You know, and they're all saying the right words and about how it is it can bring in with investment, blah, 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 blah. But the regulators don't seem to be quite aligned with that yet. So as you say, the crypto asset register, um, I think a lot of companies were removed from it recently or left it recently simply yes. because it had taken so long to get thrown. There's, yeah, there's a few things there. But yeah, there was the temporary register. Time was running out. Yep. A lot of them got either kicked off or asked to withdraw because they were just not going to meet the mustard. But on the politician side, I actually had a dinner last week with a, um, a lobbying group to bring a few politicians in to talk about the narrative, what's missing, what are we actually seeing and what is actually there to protect consumers. And the real problem is the current legislative is pushing money out of the out of the country mm -hmm. and pushing users out of the country, like pushing um, uh, sign ups out of the country protection. So you sign up to a platform in Hong Kong, guess what? You're not protected. You sign up to one in the Bahamas, Seychelles, guess what? They'll offer you whatever you please uh, and it's up to you to make that decision now everyone should be able to do whatever they want with their money I'm, I'm all about that before the crypto narrative whatsoever but then putting really imposing restrictions on uk businesses that want to do it right that want yep. to build really cool tech in a really innovative way in a really secure and regulated way like copper like arcax like all those really big names in there um we're getting killed on competition you know we can't offer leverage and that's fine. I don't really need leverage for crypto, but you could sign up to a Binance or a crack or whatever and get 50 X very, very quickly and get wrecked very, very quickly. So I think there should be a more level playing field of people want to sports bet. People want to gamble. People want to do this. They want to trade. They want to option crypto should fall into that same thing and not be overly regulated just because there's a few bad actors that make really good headlines, you know? Yeah. Well, I think it comes back. If you look at the, 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 the FCA's response on the crypto asset register and that, they actually did do a survey. Well, I, I took part in it and I provided a response and that. And it ended up, I think it was something like 96% of the respondents said crypto is uh, highly risky, you know, no, no, nothing certain, you could lose all your money, but let us do it anyway. 
you know, they're, they're quite comfortable that the public no, no, risk, it's being, risks being, are being, being aware of risk. And I think yep. the main problem with crypto is anonymity and its global reach is yep. that a platform or a scam or a token can turn up overnight. And that's the real risk. And I think mm -hmm. education is the real risk. So a lot of this stuff we can spot straight away. We've been seeing this for a really long time ago. We know this. And you can spot it when it's fake. I was celebrities talking about a Bitcoin trading algo. Yeah, yep. really fake. Yep. Um, sometimes the whole websites, they're like the sun has had their website cloned a bunch of times. So I think the ability to research, the ability to do due diligence, two things that are not taught very well in school are probably the key factors. And it just happens to be labeled with crypto, which is a very easy way to, you know, blame crypto. Yeah. Um, like a guy, what was it? It was a solicitor in Northampton, I think it was. And he said, oh, I got scammed with crypto. I sent 11,000 pounds with a Bitcoin to a supposed lady in Romania. Because like an online romance, no, you just got scared. Bitcoin's got yep. nothing to do with it. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Yeah. And, and it shows as well that there's nothing between crypto scams and traditional scams. No. So, so exactly. I was running a panel a few days ago, which was a big insurance conference, and it was all about cybersecurity. And the tail end of it was meant to be about crypto. But beforehand, uh, I'd briefed the panel, and all the panelists said, I don't want to talk about crypto. I don't know enough about it. Yeah. I'd, I'd like to stay away from it. Okay, that, that, that's fine. Yeah. Um, but we're talking about cybersecurity, cyber risk, cyber hacks, ransomware, and it was all down to education. You know, a lot of it is exactly. educating people. That's no different to whether it's crypto or US dollars or, or whatever. So yeah, I get that. And then you get the thing, you get the thing as well, where you think that people who are uh, well informed and, and intelligent fall for it themselves. I had um, someone who contacted me recently, a, a very well-respected lawyer who I deal with, with a very well-known law firm. This guy switched on, and this guy, he and I have um, been at conferences, le legal conferences, talking about crypto and that. So he knows his stuff. And then he said to me the other week, oh, I've not, not spoken to you for a few weeks. Um, my uncle's got 50,000 pounds worth of one coin um, oh, do, do you know? Do you know where we could sell it to? Because there must be a market. There's I no said. Market. I said. Do you know what one coin is? Yeah. <laughs> and he'd completely oh, forgotten no. about it. Yeah. So th th that shows me this is someone who should know better. Mm. Anyway, we've got a few more people joining us now. It's great. So uh, welcome, uh, Elena. Hello. Good, good evening, as always. And JT's joined us as well. I see, Sandeep's joined us. Hey, Sandeep. Hello. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Hello. But, um, and that's and that's just a, it's just a shame that that's you know the market still has a bad image, but I think a lot of other markets have an equally bad image. Just people don't remember. Yep. I was, uh, to, I was listening to you talking about cybersecurity, Gary. Yeah. 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 And I mean, you know where they all want to go, where they all want to go with these. Yeah, is that basically you know, nobody or, or retail has no no way to secure themselves or or to to host a wallet whatever you want to call it yeah uh and therefore you know there should be banks to do that for you yeah you know that's where this is going you you will have to be we will have to tell what wallets we have each yeah disclosure have. yeah the, and the banks will, will come back to it and the banks will control they will custody yeah. Yeah, uh, exactly. and and that's where, you know, I think as good as Web3 is, um, it's kind of like it's an always online attack vector. Everyone can see your wallet. Everyone can see the last time you used it. They can see if you're a variable target or not. So this whole, um, the, the Apple one the other week, your MetaMask seed is on your mm -hmm. Apple backup. So I didn't know that. Uh, personally, I don't keep that much in my MetaMask because it's always on. You can always see it. I know people that have been click hacked. For a very, you and me, Gary, know someone that be click hacked massively recently and there was someone who they clicked act for 650k who leaves 650k in a metamask that has no 2fa has no biometrics uh it's a very very and, and icloud is not the most secure platform out there so there's you know the problem with web3 is that it's always on the great thing is that you could be self-sovereign and hold everything but a lot of people aren't ready for that yeah. well, it, it, it's, not, uh, it's the worst thing is people leaving it on a mobile phone yeah. well oh, you know. it, <laughs> it, 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 the problem is that once you've been in this space for a while, you, you spend half your life getting horrified about some of the naivety of others. And then you realize, actually, it's not naive. It's just that they weren't educated in the first place. 
I, I watched um, an interview a few weeks back now on US TV. I think it was on CNN or something. And it was an interview of this couple uh, and the guy had been hacked and he'd had a million dollars of, of crypto stolen. And um, no 2FA, no security, no, no nothing. And then it got worse because you think, well, that's pretty bad. It's pretty sad. But this guy's now gone on national TV. He then said how much the ransomware demand was. He then said which cryptocurrencies he currently held. And it then showed a screenshot of his Coinbase account. Now, admittedly, it didn't show the, the account details. But it's like you yep. just ask, you're just asking for trouble here because what's going to happen next is you're going to start getting emails from people Not saying, it. saying <laughs> hi, it's, co yep. it's, co it's Coinbase here following up on your recent hack. Yeah. Please, cl please click here, and we'll release the stuff. It reminds me. It, you know, reminds me really when um, it was ninety nine, two thousand. Internet came on, and it starts all the scams appearing on internet, and so many people because people were not educated at that time. Yeah, but still continues. Yeah, it's the same thing now, but with a different with a different thing. Is that now your money is not in your bank account on your credit card? Yeah, it's on your phone. But it's your I, computer, and this is this is what I've been warning people for a long time. You know, don't keep anything on your phone. So simple. But, as yeah, that, but, you know? but I think this still draws back to a human problem. There are still scams in other markets. I mean, there's a, a massive property developer recently in the UK went under for 19 million pounds of other people's money. Now that's just unsecured property loans, but they weren't educated enough to ask what security is there, uh, how are you protecting my money, what is my position if it goes wrong with the ombudsman, all this other kind of stuff, and genuine people have put their life savings in someone else's hands with zero security. So it's nothing to do with cyber security, but it's still money from a bank account to another bank account given to a person. Behind every scam, there's still a person. Yep. If people know are educated to protect themselves, like I said before, research and due diligence, none of this stuff would happen. You don't have to know wallet security in 2FA. You have to have a bit more common sense. Well, that's yeah, probably, I, I, that, J JT, I was going to offer, that probably comes back to your point, really that in a way, it's bizarre. You look at these annual surveys of which professions do you trust least? And it kind of changes each year. You know, one year it's politicians, another year it's lawyers, another year it's insurance companies and that. But bankers are traditionally not well-trusted organizations. You know, no one trusts the big banks or anything like that. However, we do still lodge our assets with them. You know, we, we put our current account, our deposit accounts, everything like that with them. So I, I think we, we could see, as JT says, there'll be a move towards banks offering effectively crypto, um, sorry, custodial services, simply because they've got the brand reputation of, well, I, I trust the bank with my deposit account. Why wouldn't I trust them with my crypto? And that, that's something where I think the opportunity then is I'm involved in a couple of crypto custodial projects is maybe to sell into the banks a more yeah. stable, secure system. Because a lot of the banks don't know what they're doing either at the moment. That's, that's what we're doing the same thing, Gary. We're talking with two kind of neo saving kind of platforms right now. Their users want it. They don't want to do the custody because they don't know enough. They're not tech people. They're investors. They want rounding up, but they aren't comfortable with sending money offshore to Coinbase or any of the other kind of ones. They want it kind of done for them. Mm -hmm. So they want the exposure to it and they don't want it to be a CFD and that kind of garbage. And neither does the Neobank. They want spot, they want reliable, they want walled custody, all that kind of stuff. We're offering that with our API. Uh, so we get their very, very long conversations, but there is a want for it at a banking custody level. Mm -hmm. People see the future in it, all the volatility or whatever it is, but they want to protect their pounds from eroding and they want to go into something else. So the more you try and protect people, it's kind of like you, you can't have it. Well, I want it more. You can't yeah. have it. I want it more. Well, it, it's bizarre as well, because, you know, one of the things I've said for a long time about the, the challenge with crypto is that unlike banks, if it all goes wrong, you can't go and knock on the door of the bank branch and prod the bank, bank manager in the stomach. And that's always been the advantage. So at least, you know, if you're with a bank, you can go somewhere, you can go and speak to somebody. And now all the banks are closing the branches, so they're almost about to yeah. lose. They're, they're almost about to lose that one thing that was a USP in some way. That, that would yeah. help them. There is a well, look. The, there is on the, the other side. You know, I think you. Uh, I don't know if I sent you that link a, a while back, a few years back, Gary. I was speaking at one of the conferences here in London about the 
um, central bank digital currencies. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. this was 2018 or 19. People thought I was mad. You know? Yeah, and uh, and uh, I just imagine that we a central ledger. You know, and everything goes there. Yeah, everything mm -hmm. you earn, everything you spend. You don't need a wallet. You know, no. the wallet are there. What you need is a, a QR code on the phone, uh, like the Chinese have. Or just a simple card, like you have now a credit card. Yeah, yeah. it's but, as simple as that. The we already, we already have the wallets. We already have the wallets. So Starling, Monzo, those are wallets. Oh, yeah, yeah. they hold dump. They hold numbers on a screen. Absolutely. So the users don't need to see that wallet. It's yeah. something that is underneath all yeah. of that technology. You know. So it, it, it's. I think the the most important thing is, and I to speak with a lot of people in our space is to understand that. The, the banks and the central banks will never, never let um, everyone to be, well, no, they might there's, 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 no, there's, not, there's nothing in it for them. If they want to accurately track yeah. the, the money supply, they have to tell everyone about it. <laughs> How many they, pounds are out there? They don't know. You have it on a ledger. Yeah, you could solve so much counterparty risk. You could solve so many money laundering problems, but it's not in their best interest, right? Mm -hmm. Then you take the other part of that. What can you put on top of it? You could put programmability. Oh, that would be cool. So now people can't buy burgers if they haven't paid their rent that's getting a bit nuts so programmability well, is a scary bit for me uh, and that's, that's the interesting one i, I was um I, I went to one of the all party parliamentary groups on blockchain a few years ago where we were talking about um central bank digital currencies and programmability and i'd also been on a bank of england session as well and i, I flagged up with one of the mps you know this whole idea of having a central ledger and that if you look at it from the good side of things, it allows you to look at money flow. It allows you to control things efficiently and effectively, uh, prevent systemic failure, all, all nice things. The programmability aspect is the one that societally could kill it simply for this fact that all of a sudden someone somewhere is deciding whether I've yeah. been nice enough before I can actually use my money. And well, that's what laws are for. Yeah, you legislate yeah. and you say you cannot do that and that's it, you know? so. What, but the good, the good side of it is that you can have smart contracts created, yeah, or whatever you want to be able to 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 do whatever fiscal policies you want. So mm. you have better control of inflation. You yeah. know, having all of that, uh, you receive everything on the on the, the, the digital yeah. palm, whatever it is. But whatever real, time, real time, real time monetary policy. It's exactly. cra crazy, crazy, exactly. crazy thought, right? Well, yeah, well it, I mean, you can because you know if it's on a central ledger, if it's a fast. If a fast, um, if it is well architected, first of all, then you can do it at the day level, you know, and you can adjust whatever you want. And you don't even need to do anything. It's on the smart contracts. It happens automatically. If X, then do Y. Yeah, it's as simple as that. But, so, but, it, but it is something that you're right that, you know, in terms of it would be the first opportunity we could actually monitor in real time money supply. Mm. So you can actually look at what M3 is, for example, one of the mm. indicators. And you can monitor it, and as you say, you could algorithmically manage it. Because now that, that that sounds fantastic, until you well, work out what yeah, could happen with that. But I, I gave this this talk. Uh, uh, I think it was 2018 or nine, 2018, I think. And I said, it, just think about this. Yeah, everything that you produce in the country, yeah, and everything you spend in the country goes into that central ledger, and you get at birth, yeah a unique identifier, it's an ash key. Every organization gets that unique identifier, an ash key, you know, government on government, doesn't matter, they all go into that central ledger. You have full control. You know, guess what happens as well? There's no more um, tax evasion because mm -hmm. the government knows every single cent that you earn and that you spend. Yeah. Well, even better, you're right into the smart contract. So if there's a VAT element, it automatically deducts it. Uh, there you go. <laughs> so so, so, so it, it's got some good things. I, think. I just wanted to widen this up because I'm conscious we've got Sandeep and um, Sharad on the call today as well. I don't know whether they've been on to any of these sessions before, if they've got any questions or anything they'd like to share. Yeah. Sandeep, what, what brings you along today? Have you got any questions you like answering? We're just here to listen. I was here uh, in one of the sessions as well, so just to know, you know, what's happening in the market, in the crypto market, but uh, nothing particular to know. Yeah, I, I, th I think the short one in the crypto market is that Bitcoin and Ethereum are channeling at the moment from what I've seen with the numbers. Yeah. 
Um, since, since like February. I mean, it's yeah, I, I, I was going to say m m middle of February. I think it's February the 11th or something. It, it's been channeling between the, a, a, a range. You zoom out further to like, I don't know, the one day chart back to April last year, lows in the 21,000 pounds mark up to 46,000 pounds mark. We've just been, you know, kind of boring. Yeah. Uh, short term stuff, great, but I'm not a trader. I'm a digital hoarder. I do weekly, whatever it is. I can't remember what I buy anymore. It's just a standing order. But yeah, kind of a, kind of a boring market, which is why I think, you know, a lot of stuff that is not a great investment, uh, gets way more airtime. You know, I'm still learning about NFTs. I get the concept of it. I'm not a collector card kind of guy, and that's what it is at the moment. For me yeah. anyway, I'd love to be debated wrong. I, I was going to say, I'm hopefully sharing on the screen at the moment the Bitcoin yep. price on USDT. And you can see from the beginning of February, you know, low of 32 and a hike of like oh, 65 at some point. Um, but broadly speaking, in the last few weeks, it's definitely just been challenging the zone. I'm the same as you. I'm not a trader. I, I just look at the markets and you can see that there's like a degree of inactivity going on. And you're right that the really exciting stuff now, and again, crypto is like financial services. It goes through waves of what, what's interesting in that. And crypto, the mainstream stuff, the Bitcoin, Ethereum, that seems to be fairly stable. It's almost like fiat type trading now. Yeah. And the exciting stuff is the NFTs right now, as, yeah. as it was the ICOs in 2018 and 2017. And, and DeFi, no, there's, hardly, there's not that much, I will say not that much in my world that I see every day, there's less DeFi than there was 12 months ago, 18 months ago. Okay. There's was DeFi, was DeFi everything and AMM everything and Aave everything. And now it's NFTs on Solana and NFTs on XRP. And... Yeah, what I can tell you is at the moment that um... A lot of VCs, crypto VCs, investors in general, most of the funds are really with a step back, you know. Mm. Uh, they're, they're very careful in what they are investing. Yeah. Uh, they they tend to invest on infrastructure projects at the moment. Yeah. Uh, and the, the, the businesses that are building on top of it, yeah. Exactly. Mm. They're already preparing for the next wave. Yeah. Okay. And a lot of M&A acquisitions as well, that usually signals a bit of a consolidation period as well. Consolidation period, absolutely. And I've been speaking quite a few of these funds, and um, uh, I mean, they're looking at other, other existing um, blockchains, you know? So mm. many people are very interested in NEAR at the moment. Yeah, I've heard a bit yeah, about NEAR. A lot of people talking about NEAR at the mm. moment. So, Sorry, JC, was that NEO? NEO. NEAR? NEAR. NEAR, NEAR protocol. N-E-A-R. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Neo, I, yeah, whatever happened to Neo just stopped. <laughs> just, it's still there, but like it didn't did it do anything. I, I lost interest in like 2018. I, don't well, know. I, th I think it's I think it's still going. It's just that there was concern of the number of nodes that there were was not making it particularly decentralized. Right. And I, th and I think also a lot of the nodes were Chinese or thought ah. to be Chinese. Because it was Neo and Ontology at the same time, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. where I lost track or lost interest. So, I can't remember. Yeah, and the same change like near a left zero i remember i spoke to you about that gary you know a left zero they're based in switzerland they got a no action letter from finma they, oh wow they, they, they jumped from one dollar to three dollars mm. within a week they came back to two dollars 68 but many people are saying they probably go in the next 18 months uh, and by the way this is no financial advice i always like to say <laughs> but they will go in the next 18 months big time potentially the same run like ethereum had before you know but if, if they had a no action letter because no, no action letters are actually are really good you know yeah. they, they sound quite horrifying but what a no action letter means is that the regulator has actually said we've taken a look at what you're doing and we're not saying that it's legal or anything but what we are saying is that we won't take any action against you for it there's a landmine out there i just can't tell you where it is <laughs> yeah yeah, uh, and so at, at the moment, from what we can tell, um, we're not going we're not going to shut you down, type thing, uh, yeah. which is yeah, interesting. That's pretty much it. They look at it and they say, yes, this is basically you, you, you present and they say, this is our project, it's a utility token. Uh, uh, and they say, yeah, we agree, it's a utility token, we don't have any action against you. You know, okay. the thing is, they are not getting listed. 
Yeah, they don't yeah. go up to the exchange and get listed because that can get you into trouble. So they will let the exchanges list. They will let the exchanges acquire the token. Yeah. And that will be up to the exchanges to, to list the token, which is very, very cool, you know? Yeah. Because, uh, and I've I had a chat about, I do, I do a bit of mentoring on the side, and this guy wants to do this project. He's got, it's kind of like a competitor to Twitch. Um, he has a community, he has users. And he's like, I want to go do an ICO to raise money. And I went, don't do it. Um, and he's like, well, how do I do this, 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 this? I said, well, as soon as you start chasing listings, you stop working on the business because you're, you're focused on this. Like, how many in your team? It's just me. And I went, dude, don't do it. How many users do you have? He's like, oh, about 10,000 a month. But you have 10,000 users a month right now from a bootstrap dude like do, get equity or yep. debt or something don't don't do a token or get your community to do something on dexes or whatever but well, he kind of had it? something and didn't know what to do with it and i was just amazed well that's where i'm, I'm seeing crowdfunding getting interesting again that in a, in a yeah. way i i, I that Cycle, we may yeah. we may see a hybrid of a merge between ico and crowdfunding in some way um mm. we, we had someone on a couple of weeks ago from uh, seed legals i think it yep. was so and he, awesome. Yeah, and he, he was on, he was saying he's getting into the space more. Yep. Um, so again, you think, well, maybe this is just another of those cycles that we're going to go through where we're going to see uh, fundraising for startups done adopting the crowdfunding model, but with a crypto aspect to it. Yep. So we'll, we'll see where that goes. There's a, lot yeah. of, there are a lot of stuff going on at the moment, people coming up with some very creative stuff around fair launches yeah yeah so a fair launch and match with i think you know what i'm talking about jeff yeah, yeah. and the, and those fair launches are are amazing because what it means is you don't have all of these funds coming and buying 500k and private rounds and you know basically they don't do any seed round they don't know any private round they just go i'm gonna put it there available yeah and i'm yeah. gonna do a fair launch everybody is it can go whenever they come. They have a, um, sniping, what's it called? Anti-sniping bots, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, or sniping bots, whatever they call. That basically, if you have a bot and you try to, to, to run you know, over anyone else, they'll basically yeah. lock all your tokens, you, you know? Mm. And, get, and that gets people with those bots in serious trouble, you know? Because yeah. that could, could, could do with a bit more of that and DeFi for yield farming and the flash the loans. Flash loans. Oh, yeah. God. Like they, yeah. yeah. But um, I think that while well, it's all well and good, it puts more risk on the company delivering a good product. And some people don't want to take off the risk and bring investors in so they can build the product. So it's kind of a two, it's kind of a double sided coin. I, 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 think, I, think, I think it's great. Everyone gets it at the same time, no preferential. Uh, but then people want to have to have to want to come in. I don't think that's where it's. I don't think it's. I don't think it's for everyone, but the spectacular stuff obviously does very, very well. Yeah. Well, that's that's you where. Know, I... You know, sorry, Gary. Do you know what uh, yeah. the problem, Jeff, is that um a lot. I I'm invested a bit last year, you know, on a few cool projects, and what happens is because of all of these funds, they always have massive allocations. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Pre allocations. Yeah. Yeah. But, but etc. When they get when they start to vest, yeah, and they get their chunk, they are the first ones to dump, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, of course. Investors it's... always get in, into trouble because yeah. I mean, if someone dumps one million, it's very difficult for you dumping five k or three k, yeah. you know. Because they always have a deal. They always have a uh, yeah. a, li a liquidation right when they purchase it. They don't know we lock up for five years. Mm, not for us. We'll buy it at a discount in bulk with no lock terms. That's just how it is. So but that, the, that's, that's something that's always blown me away because where I've been involved in some projects and one of the things we've always insisted on is, uh, particularly fa founding type deals, is that there is a lock-in period to, to avoid exactly that kind of risk. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. but the problem crypto, is... Crypto still has people in it. People yeah, in the deal. Yeah. Yes, and the, the problem is that as you are getting, as it starts to vest the period, yeah, let's say it's vesting over 18 months, yeah, you will get the same percentage as I get. So you get 10% back, yeah, of tokens. I get 10%. But if I'm a fund and I invested 1 million, I have $100,000 now worth of tokens, yeah? But you only, you invested 10,000, you have only 1,000. Mm -hmm. uh, usually the big boys are the ones who get the, 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 the tokens first because this distribution, believe me, is not done all at the same time, yeah? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so when they get first, they're gonna dump the token when you get your token to sell, you're done. 
you know you get a lot less for yours so what we seeing what we seen last year a lot was the big funds getting much much bigger and much much bigger much more allocations i mean there was funds giving a million dollars to anyone mm. you just present your project they will give just yeah a million here i can even tell you any names you know but no not on this call but it was quite insane to be truly honest what happened last year and i think that's the problem we are seeing now you know because now the market's contracted quite a bit because of what happened you know yeah so, so sandy coming back to your point you know broadly speaking at the moment from what i'm saying cryptocurrency the, the the trend at the moment is it seems to be fairly settled at the moment um I, I always find it funny that you can tell how active the market is by how much um social media activity there is uh, particularly when you get lots and lots of people saying that they're crypto experts, that usually mm. means it's in a rising market. And, and they're all going a bit quiet at the moment, uh, which makes me think it's set, settling down a little bit. Yeah, and I so mean, I, I, did, I did notice that as well. Uh, but when it comes to, uh, I mean, NFT, I just want to ask uh, to the you know, podium here where I did see, uh, I mean, that's mainly digital uh, you know, assets uh, can be sold through NFT, I believe. But... Uh, most of the NFTs are sold in the Ethereum. Is there any reason it is just linked up to the Ethereum or it it's, just a, it's, it's moving away from that quite a lot at the moment. It, it was initially Ethereum simply because that was the most easily accessible large community the, programmable platform. That was already a standard for individual tokens. That's why. Yeah. Yep. They already have the 721. Yeah. So, so originally uh, uh, Ethereum had a standard called ERC20 which was for tokens that were being issued for fundraising with, with um, ICOs. Then, as Jeff says, the, they developed ERC721 and ERC1155, another one. So it, it had that platform available. But if you take a look now at uh, the likes of Cardano, um, in fact, Binance, BNB, um, that, that's got like um, NFT type capabilities. Solana's, so, Solana's up and coming quite a lot as well. A yeah. lot of marketplaces on there. Yeah. So what, what you tend to, what you, I was going to offer what you tend to find, and I've seen this with a number of other uh, projects as well, is that most people start with Ethereum because it's got the community, it's got the background, it's got relative maturity. And then after a while, they'll then migrate onto another platform. From the, uh, you go from gateway drug up to a class A. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it, it's, 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 it's sadly, it's exactly right. And I've, I've seen that with mainstream blockchain projects. Yep. Where they, they've started off on Ethereum, then they've gone on to Matic or something else, yeah. Yeah, well, exactly. Or even Hyperledger, and, and then they are and on R three. And you see, as some of the programming languages start to get a similarity, oh, we're just going to program on this. Yep. Like, well, I can hire fifty developers out. It needs solidity, and that's another cost. Bit the businesses that are doing that, the talent cost has skyrocketed. Like, oh, tell me about it. Um, no, I'm I am telling you about it because <laughs> I've had to do it. <laughs> um, but you know. You get you know, having a blockchain company or a crypto company, and you don't have an office. We don't have an office. We're a global business. Uh, we get to source talent from wherever it is, not just in the price. So we've found some really talented guys in um, uh, parts of Eastern Europe. Our developer on the website, he disappeared for two weeks because he was fleeing the Russian border. I'm like, you okay? He's fine. Um, another guy in Lagos. Another. We got our operations team down in Turkey. You know, and it's not a cost for these. Were the, these were the best people for the job, and they're amazingly loyal. You know, they want to have. Uh, they started off as freelancers, and now they want something more for their career. They could make good money being freelancer, but like, well, how am I going to step up to a bigger, bigger level? I need to find a business that wants to nurture that. And we've picked up some amazing people that way. We still pay handsomely for it, but you know, the talent cost of this having developers all speak the same language and not just a yep. very niche one is like insane saving You're talking like an 80k developer versus a 200k developer so so that, that, that's certainly thing that initially ethereum's got that good development pool that 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 tended to work until you find it's got limitations in the, mm. the language or whatever and this is where you, you see this move on to the like solana and there so i think you'll see that that'll increase and I think also with gas fees and that kind of thing, Ethereum is less and less attractive as an yeah. NFT platform now. Yeah. I, I keep saying it, um, Ethereum is going to be a victim of its own success at, at some point. I agree. Yeah. So, uh, unless they get proof of stake sorted out, it's just going to become too expensive to actually use yeah, all, it'll, all the best it'll, platforms. It'll kind of turn into what Bitcoin will be in 
10, 15 years, the miners won't be making the block rewards. So the transaction fees will probably start to increase and it'll be good for bigger transactions. Lightning will be there, but it'll be good for bulky 5,000, 20,000 pound transactions. It's not going to be good for two to three quid. But Solana is, it's like literally a fraction of a cent. It's like XRP, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I think it's great. And it's Solana fast, the, bloody so fast. Solana, I can tell you right now, Solana is not going to be the, the blockchain because they have so many problems. With yeah. Security. The architecture is so bad. The whole thing is really looks well, like a very bad design. Yeah, but how, how long has Solana been around? Three years, maybe? Yeah, I mean, they have a lot of money now. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. they can fix a lot well, of you, stuff. You, 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 can throw, you can throw money at stuff. It doesn't always fix it. What you need is true, true, true talents in some ways. And, and if vision. You look at, yeah. People need to come together more than just around code and money. You need a vision to follow. And maybe there's just not enough there. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I think, hard Gavin, going, but... I think Gavin is probably still the the front runner. You know, mm. I'm pretty sure. I mean, if they can fix some of the things, uh, then I think they will be the front runner. Um, but you know, watch out for other chains out there coming yeah. out. There's there's a couple of them that are very good. I, I was speaking with a, a couple of founders in Dubai. Uh, there's some guys coming out with a chain that they are raising at the moment. Oh my God. If these and they have a prototype, if the guys can do this, there's no need for bridges anymore, no need for any wow. of the stuff that people are creating that creates all sorts of problems. And they it will be a killer. There's layer zero as well. They got something like I mean, they were like one billion of us subscribed, yeah. And wow. they got a hundred they lifted, I think, 180 million uh, um, investment. It was insane. But these type of chains are the ones who are gonna potentially take over from mm. Ethereum. Yeah. But people keep forgetting one thing. Ethereum still has about 70% of the market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the other thing to watch out as well is that whilst you still need things like Layer 2 or Lightning Network or whatever, that, that's a good demonstration that your blockchain is not working right. I think, exactly. <laughs> yeah. The need for bridges for me is, is, is a problem, you know. It should, yeah. Uh, I mean, the, the interoperability is between chains. I like the concept that Cosmos came up with, you know, with Stargate, for example, you know, very, very cool stuff. But um, people don't build, people that are just, people well, not talking and building stuff together, you know. But, but I always used to say, if you, if you go back to another technology for a minute, you look at the VHS war, or the VHS, Philips 2000, yeah, Betamax. You always give that example. Yeah, <laughs> and I always say that the real winner out of all of that was not VHS. The real winner was the people who designed the SCART socket on the back of the TV. That meant it didn't actually ma matter what you plugged it into. Yeah. So in interoperability is key. So this is where the likes of Chainz or Polkadot, you know, the, these kind of things have well, future. Alina, what do you think? We haven't heard from you yet. <laughs> Put you on the spot. <laughs> it's been quite a technical session today. Yeah. Well, I will make it non-technical. What? Do you have a good question or something that's bugging you? Uh, well, I, I'm just enjoying being here, listening yeah. to you all. Yeah, uh, Elaine is great. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Elaine is great because she, stay, she stays quiet and then she'll just say, I've got a really basic question. No, I don't and, and, it is, and it is always an absolutely brilliant one because it always, it's, you know, you know, the time you get, it makes you think. Yeah, yeah, she's she's farming all the ideas and she's actually in the middle of a raise right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, no, I just listen. At the okay. moment. And are you, are you are you investing? Are you doing Bitcoin or Ethereum or NFTs or anything? Uh, or? I'm reading up everything, reading up. everything what you, I can find about blockchain, have you, the have you, um, NFTs. Have you, have you read um, Dominic Frisbee's book? No, I haven't. A very good book. Have you read that one, Gary? No, I haven't. Dominic, uh, Dominic, Dominic Frisbee. Dominic Frisbee. Dominic Frisbee. I'll, I'll Dominic go and Frisbee. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll add I'll that to the, um, the video later on. Yeah, it's his, um, uh, he wrote a new one called Shadow Book, uh, sorry, Shadow Punk Revolution, but the one talking about a 2014 uh, Bitcoin, the future of money. Okay. Very, very good entry level. You know, it's one of those books that doesn't age. And I had him on my podcast a little while ago. I'll send you the link for that as well, Gary. Really, really funny cool. guy. He was a comedian, um, really insightful, a bit wacky, um, but has that kind of zhuzh about finance and people and economies and stuff like that so it's a very good read his some of his content's amazing so okay well so certainly we'll, we'll we'll check that out so I'll, I'll stick a link in later on on that and if you've got the other one then uh there's definitely because because this is the other thing I'll, i always get asked what would i recommend for people who are learning you know what, what should people go and read or watch and, and i'd say well you youtube's quite good 
there's lots of stuff on there. The problem is you don't actually know. Well, yeah. the, the, the biggest problem I find with YouTube is working out whether the people who've done the YouTube videos know what they're talking about. That's the biggest problem. That's also the truth. You can pay for marketing to make you get prompted up a bit. So it is difficult to find some. Yeah. Um, I think Twitter is a good place to start for content research. And then you can go into, go into the YouTube one because people on Twitter will just destroy each other. Mm. So you get someone that's got good content and good reviews. That's kind of where you can start. I'm not really a Twitter person. I just troll people. But um, you will find good quality stuff on there and then start to evolve your, you know, your, your reading ecosystem. So, yeah. Well, uh, Elena, are you still looking on, on the blockchain side of things, things like um, traceability and product provenance, that kind of thing? That was an area of interest for you, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm looking at that. And I uh, am now realizing that I'm more interested in NFTs. Ah, okay. Cool. He said of things. Yeah. Because I, I, I describe NFTs as blockchain done, done right. Because one of, the, yeah. one, of the, one of the things about blockchain that people talked about originally was the whole idea of provenance. Mm. So wh whether it's diamonds with Everledger or yep. pro pro provenance.org or whatever. And the idea of having a, a, a token that is atomically representing something in the physical world yep. uh, and doing it programmatically in a consistent way I, I definitely think it's it's doing the what the blockchain provenance piece for you. Mm. So yeah, I got a good question about the how how it's going to maintain that integrity of the physical object. That's when the it, problem. Yeah, because if, if it is sold on the through NFT, and if, if you know somebody made some changes and uh, you know put that out onto the market again, how how that's going to maintain that integrity? Yeah, it's like you, like you can you can fake a serial number, you can fake a QR code. So yeah. oh, it, it matches the NFT and the blockchain. It's, it could, mm -hmm. You could still be holding the fake one. So yeah. there's, there's, there is still that problem. I don't think anyone's really figured that out elegantly yet. Because there's, there's some neat stuff coming along. So you look at um, putting in like DNA level dyes in um, physical products. What, what, one of the challenges with NFTs is when they when you try and use them for managing things in the physical world. Definitely, because if it's a digital asset, then you can cryptographically secure it. You can link it. You can do. It. With the, with the physical world, you've always got a problem. I had it recently with um, some fine art where you've got an NFT representing a painting, a physical painting. The problem is someone could then go and sell that physical painting without even mentioning that as an NFT attached to it in any way. And it's like, the, how do you link them there? So the, there are companies who are doing things like um, having very clever dye technology that is almost like at DNA level. So if you've got um, a bottle or something, you can put a marker on it and it can be hidden. Or, you know, diamonds, Ever Everledger did some great stuff around diamond provenance a while ago. And I think they, they might be Different, for, uh, different uh, physical assets. I look at that mm. uh, 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 for about two years already, yeah? And yep. with paints, look, if somebody disconnects, a paint that has been connected with NFT, the NFT is worth nothing. And the paint is still a, a valuable physical object. The NFT becomes a JPEG. Mm. So the, the yep. person who's going to buy the paint is going to say, where is my NFT? Mm. Well, you know, because uh, they will not, uh, in my perspective, yes, you can separate it. Yeah. But the person who's going to buy it, yeah, mm. will ask, going forward not right now but going forward ask is that an nft is that a digital yeah. representation of it and if it's not connected that person probably is gonna not gonna buy it you know if there was already a digital representation so the seller trying to disconnect both is only gonna lose yeah and the person who's gonna buy without the digital one is gonna lose in the future so it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't the, 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 this is where I've had some experience in the art world and it's mind-blowing. If you think there's some crazy people in the crypto world, oh. you know, go, 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 yeah, go, go to the art world. The art world's yeah. next level. But, but, but listen, there is, there is other uh, technologies out there, you know. So I met some guys. What they are doing is they have an AI that analyzes the digital, a high-resolution digital picture mm -hmm. of the item, of that paint, and it's going to do it pixel by pixel, yeah? And what it means is it will even know if it is a fake or not. If somebody switched for something else that is not a 100 year old paint or 200 year old paint. And it is possible with AI uh, technology today to distinguish 
if that was the, actually the same paint as the one mm -hmm. was sold. Now, you can, you can do, you can do. Years, you might need to redo it again, you know, uh, the, another picture of the paint, yeah, and go through the AI to recognize it because it changes over time, yeah? But you, pr you, you pr your problem is, though, and this was a scenario I had, that if, if you've sold a piece of art with an NFT associated with it, there's nothing stopping someone then taking that piece of art and selling it to someone else and not even mentioning that as an NFT associated yeah. with it. And this, yeah, this is the kind of thing we, we can go around in circles for everyone this because we're building tech that can be integrated into the real world and can be used in the real world. But it's like, oh, but what if? Yeah. What if and this and this doesn't happen and you lose? What happens when you lose the, the, the private key that holds the NFT? Does it make the art more expensive or worthless? So here's why they did yep. not disconnect. Tell, so that to, tell that to your solicitor. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So here's, uh, here's Gary why they disconnect. And I've implemented that already in smart contracts. Yeah? If you yep. are going to disconnect it, you know, you uh, uh, it will be very bad. Of course you can, yeah? There's nothing that stops you from doing that, yeah? But uh, what about things like royalties that are enforced on a smart contract, mm -hmm. yeah? So every yep. time the item is transacted, the NFT goes with it. And then in the future, you don't get the five percent yeah. or ten percent of world so you're losing so because why would you disconnect that as a seller you got um jurisdictional risks the law mm -hmm. for that getting paid out in a country might not be the same somewhere else yep yeah. so it will be a very very bad decision to do it yes you can do it nothing stops you absolutely right gary yeah but you know from a from a from a collector's perspective from a business perspective why would you lose money to, because you would lose money I, I, I'll, I'll tell you why and it's because of the real thing that actually drives a lot of our collections. And it's what uh, crypto is accused of, and quite falsely, it's money laundering. Because actually, it, mm. if, you, it continues, if, you, if yeah. I sell it to you, how are you going to, how anybody can prove that we are not doing this together? It is not because of the NFT or not NFT. There's a, there's a whole underground market around fine art where it gets traded. And you know what, if, if I'm trying to get money out of the country, and again, like JC says, this is not financial advice. In my case, this is not criminal advice. Um, <laughs> you know, th th this is not a recommendation. Um, but people will willingly take a significant hit on the value of something yep. if it's a way of cleaning it into clean money. Also, that art piece might not be in the same country. It might already be at the destination. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. And, and in fact, what I see a lot of, I was doing a work with a US company a while ago, where actually the, the artwork remains in a vault in yep. the USA. Yep. And, it, and it's, its ownership changes all around the world. Yeah, it gets going to register and everything like that. So I think, yeah. there's, I think, yeah. there's, potential, I think there's potential to connect it. Like what if the t the, our technology was so sophisticated that every time you bought a piece of art, there was like one of a handful of apps that all used similar AI to scan it and that AI knows to go check every chain possible so it can mm -hmm. find an nft even if you don't know about it i think that's probably a better measure like oh i didn't know about the nft like well it's right here yeah you know what i mean right, right. So, I mean, public knowledge public knowledge proof it's public knowledge proof when you have a physical object through the nft is it actually when somebody buys that is it actually that person is that physical object is shipped to that person or how where it's no. Depends. So, so you, you can have it, you know, with, with some fine art. Fine art might be stored in, a, you know, a pressure sensitive, air conditioned vault somewhere, or leased it, to a leased to a gallery. Yeah. For so, 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 so it, it might be physically somewhere in the world, but the owner of it somewhere else. And, the, and this is the whole thing that an, an NFT, ultimately, it's bragging rights to show that you own yeah. something. Ape. Uh, Do the ape stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Gary, going back to the conversation, you. You said, you know, in art, anything above ten thousand dollars traded yep. needs to be reported because yep. of AML and KYC. You have to do KYC and ML. There's no other way. Okay. They the, said they're the um, they're so, the same they're the same problem with motor vehicles in Australia. People are trading all, motor vehicles. So all doing of those huge people, cash. Yeah. all of those people that you said that are trading behind the scenes doing OTC or whatever you want to call it, yeah. Yeah. They have to report, and their banks will not allow any transaction, yeah, yeah, unless that's reported. So it is visible already to the authorities. Any deals now, anything that goes behind those deals, yeah, that are not reported by the bank, then they cannot transfer the money, yeah, across. So, so straight away, um, think about borrow bonds. 
Yep. So, so Burr Bond is a, is a sure certificate that if I own that piece of paper and I've got it physically, I own it. it. So I can use that. It's like using a 10 pound note. It's just worth multiples of that. You can, but you still need to report that you bought a piece of art for $10 million. No. If no. you get in gold, I, I, or if you get a bare bond, or you get uh, cash, doesn't really matter. There was a transaction. Yep. No, I, I don't. The transaction needs to be reported, Gary. I'm supposed to report it. Gary, report uh, your art. Yeah, and as, a, and as a good citizen, I always would. Absolutely. But there are certain countries and certain things where they use art as a currency, in effect. And believe me, that does not get reported. Yeah. Of course. I, 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 um, drugs, I sold. When you tell drugs, you don't report it. It's the same thing. Those yeah. are criminal activities, right? So, mm -hmm. <laughs> but like, um, I sold my, I sold my superbike. I had it for three years. I bought it from someone on Auto Trader and I sold it on Facebook. I put six thousand miles on it and I still made an extra two hundred pounds. That three and a half thousand pounds of value was locked in that superbike. When I made a gain, I didn't report it to anyone. Now it's a smaller scale, but it's a very similar thing. Yeah, yeah, of yeah. course, it happens yeah. all the time. You Not of course, does. NFT or not NFT. Yeah. What I'm trying to say is, the, the majority of the transactions that are going out there in art, yeah, are not going through the the, the usual um, auction Channels. house. Yeah, yeah. No. You, you, they happen behind. From those, yes, half of them is like you said, Gary. You don't even see what's happening as well. But there's a big chunk of them. They have to. They are people actually buying. Yeah. yeah. And they're the ones that, and they, and they really don't want a blockchain for that either. Yeah, exactly, and, exactly. And, 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 and the, the, the traditional collectors, that's the bit. When you, uh, I've been speaking quite a lot of them, by the way, you know, and they said, yes, but they want cash. They don't want crypto. So there's mm -hmm. a ramp off the fiat problem there. Yeah, there's going to be yeah. millions and millions. And then there's also that problem, which is um, uh, how you're going to move stuff around. Yeah, so I had to negotiate with them and have all the pieces of art have to go to a free port and then in the free port you have to send the the expert to actually look at it to see if it's still the same <laughs> it was switched you know and so on and so on but 80 percent of the art is in free ports anyway yeah, they, 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 don't you pay people. you don't you don't pay tax on it until you receive it so free people use free ports tax havens yeah yeah, yeah. so so they, saw, they don't pay tax. i saw that on, i saw it on billions <laughs> yeah, so 80%, 80% of the art is in free ports, in, in the two free ports, Lugano, uh, well, in Geneva, the main one, and then in Lugano. And guess what? These guys, I think the rules are you can take two or three times a year that whatever piece of art you have to your home, you know, birthday party, whatever you want. So when this art is exchanging money, they are not paying tax at all, you know, because it stays in the free port anyway. Yeah. So just to move money around. But that, that art has been like that for years and years and years you know? so, so so it sounds like um all the regulators and law enforcement agencies they should be listening to the crypto people because we actually set a good example <laughs> we, <laughs> we, which, which is crazy isn't it when you read all the reports of how crypto is used by money launderers and it's the worst tool in the world for it though it's so stupid. exactly by the, yeah. by the way i just want to tell you before we finish i think you're on time isn't it uh, yeah, yeah. You, you're interested in in um nfts uh, gavin is on uh, the crypto m group he launched a very cool stuff you know some collection of nfts drunken okay. monk you, did, you, you didn't see him? he posted on the group actually okay let me post to the link here i like it a lot uh, cool. i look at it have a uh, look at it so it's, this is from Ga gavin yeah he's on the cool. crypto M group. i've looked i knew we were at um kind of peak nftness with collections when my plumber was pitching me we had to get a shower <laughs> we, had to, we had to get a shower <laughs> We had to get a shower, put in our flat, and I foolishly was wearing my hoodie, and he'd heard a coin pass. He's like, "Do you work there?" And I went, "Yeah, let's just go with that because I don't <laughs> want it. I don't. Oh, no, you know, he knows where I live, so it's whatever." Um, and he's like, "Oh, I'm going to launch this collection. It's called like, was it Toxic Zombies and da da da, ten thousand. I'm like, "Wow, the plumber's launching it." He's like, "I've got a dev team of this. My artist is this. My Discord. Oh, yeah, I'll join your Discord. Yeah, sure." <sighs> like, wow. But yeah. Peak, peak, peak NFTness for me. <laughs> my, my, my plumber pitches me a marketplace. Well, which, which is great. That means there's about to be another cycle about to kick off of something else. That, that, that's Contrary. what I always like to look for. Contrarian, yeah, definitely. Yeah, that, definitely cool. Yeah, yeah, prepare for a new cycle soon, you, yeah. you know, because I, I think 
when it comes September, October, oh my God, you know, all these top four funds in the world, they said they're going to come into crypto like BlackRock and so on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're going to come yeah. big time, you know? Yeah. Right. Th thanks for sharing that, that link there. Folks, we're pretty much on eight o'clock and I always like to try and close these off on time. So I hope you've managed to get any questions that you had that you brought along answered from that. It was a re really entertaining session. And you know, Jeff and JT in particular, thanks very much for um, con contributing to stuff on that. Much appreciated. For those who didn't make it but are watching this on YouTube, do click on the subscribe and like and all that kind of stuff. But do come and join in on future one. As you can see, it's loads of fun. And uh, hopefully get to meet some of you in real life at some point as well. So mm -hmm. ha have a great day, folks. Uh, have a good one. Bye -bye. Yes, cheers, guys. Thank you. Cheers Thank now. you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.